name is Michael Neal. Hello, my name is Jared Neal. Me and my dad and my brother run a Brangus commercial herd out of St. Francisville, Louisiana. Neal Ranch is a trade name that incorporates all our businesses together. Going back to our roots, my grandfather Phil and my dad Craig started a commercial cattle business in the late 80s to the early 90s. My brother, Michael, and I became really involved in it. In 2004, we were trying to create mostly a closed herd. We brought Brangus bulls into the operation. We started breeding Brangus bulls into the commercial cattle. Over the years, the herd has pretty much became all Brangus and ultra black. Close to being a purebred herd, no other cattle, females that have been added to this herd. In 2010, my husband Michael and I started another division. We call it Mid-South Cattle. From the very beginning, our main focus was to produce the best cattle that we could. It kind of became my passion, learning, and it's a totally different world than the commercial side of the cattle. So it was a lot of education. Which as of today, we're running roughly 1,400 commercial Bring Us Cross cows, breeding roughly 500 commercial Bring Us Cross heifers. Two or 300 of them heifers that go back and I herd every year, and the other 200 be sold commercially to people who want to use them as replacements. The most enjoyable part is when you take a cow and a bull and you cross them and you do IVF for embryo transfer and you can go right in the pasture 10 months from now and they're all brothers and they're all sisters. That's the enjoyment. The female y'all kept video, that's her full brother. See where the green dragon is in here. Yeah, but they got another one out here. That, that just... Come on, guys! A lot of our operation, we do something that 90% of the people in the business don't do. We raise replacement heifers off of heifers. That means they're her first calf will be a replacement heifer. We breed our heifers, top genetics, Brangus bulls, and their heifer calves will make replacement cows. These heifers that go through all the heifers the first time get AI, artificial insemination. 10 days later, they have a bull put with them to clean them up, whatever it don't take. But there's always bulls naturally breeding also. There's two or three things that Nutrition. makes it successful is genetics, management. Cattle have to have calves. The right bulls breeding your cattle, putting pounds at the end of the day. You know, she has to be a mama. She has to produce a calf every year. If she can't produce a calf every year, she needs to go. Our heifers are our priority. The steers are our byproducts. We're trying to raise the replacements. Well, in the big picture, I mean, we're raising bulls that eventually the company and all that's yeah. getting bulls back. My name is Garrett Thomas, and I'm the owner and founder of High Point Sales and Marketing. They have a large commercial operation, and they use bulls from Mid-South within their own uh, program. So that kind of allows them to constantly keep themselves in check. So they are, as they move the standards up for Neil Ranch and what they want to produce, uh, they kind of apply that and, and offer those same benefits to their customers whenever they're raising bulls for them. See, he has big scrotum, a lot of bone. His sheep is perfect, meaty calf, and his EPDs are through the roof. Have a plan, you need to call hard. Don't fall in love with old Betsy because she's just a good old cow, whether she had a calf the last four or five years. She gotta go. We put no one else's calves with our calves, no one else's bulls with our bulls. It's all family, all three of us. It's a closed deal. So you see like this female right here. This female will be flush in her future. We'll go in, we'll harvest the eggs out of her, breed them, and then put them in different cows to create calves just like her. She's a phenomenal female. The whole process almost takes four years to get a bull into our production cell. It's about a year of planning, then transfer into the cow, then the baby calf is born, and you get the joy of tagging that baby calf. And, and then that baby calf grows for a whole year. And then you scan it and you weigh in it and you see the whole process. And when that bull is two years old, he finally comes to sale and he gets to have his final home. It gives you a lot of enjoyment. We'd call their operation a seed stock operation. So they basically sell the bulls to commercial producers and the calves that come from those bulls at the commercial producers' operations, that's what essentially goes into the food chain. When you go to a grocery store, you see select and you see choice. And prom. Choice and prom, that's what you're trying to raise. That's, your most, that's the meat that's got the most marble in there. Lisa can take that heifer, run her numbers, made it with a bull in the computer because there's a system, and it gives a projected EPD of what that calf is going to look like number-wise 
as what it's supposed to come out. And there's a lot of tools she can use today that she uses a lot of that to her advantage of creating these offspring of these cows. And it's tools to our benefit. We, we can follow our calves out when they go to feedlots if the data's there. We get anywhere from a 87 to a 95% conception rate and raise anywhere from 90 to 95% calf crop every year. They usually do better than that. Better than uh, that. They're being a little conservative on that. Hi, my name is Troy Spencer. I'm a mixed animal veterinarian with my practice located in Mansura, Louisiana. We've, we've checked some second calf heifers that get up to 98%. Um, on a whole, they're above 90 just about all the time on the commercial herd. The most important thing for a to have a successful herd is nutrition. This pasture has rye grass and clover planted in it. Hi, my name is Craig Neal. And I'm Brenda Neal. And we're the founders of the Craig Neal and Sons Farm. Cattle, all they do is process grass. And if you can get them to eat more grass than what you got to buy to feed them, then you can come out. If you don't do that, you're never gonna come out. You got to plant stuff that's gonna give you the most forage. We've been learning for 40 years. We change things that don't work because we didn't did everything wrong. And once the ryegrass plays out, some of these fields will shut off and bail it and make haylage out of it. Commercial cattle stay with the PVM tubs and the mineral trough with the Perina wind and rain mineral in it all year round. Your mineral has to match your soil type and your area where you live. Like we need mineral with a lot of copper in it up here. We were having a lot of trouble with, with foot problems. Mm -hmm. And then we realized that it um, the soil was deficient in copper. So we started feeding Perino wind and rain, which is high in high copper, copper, and we don't hardly, hardly have the foot trouble that we used to. 5,000 acres that we lease, which comes from people that have been owning land for hundreds of years up here. As long as that landowner's there and they're proud of what you're doing to their place, you're there. You're not going anywhere. There's no more than an inch of topsoil on any of this ground up here. So when we're planting ryegrass and we're preparing the land for winter grazing, very little disking is done. We try to leave most of the pastures with native grass, grass in it. And advantage of doing that is when the ryegrass plays out, the native grass will take over in early spring and summer and the cattle continue to graze throughout the year. What I'm holding here is a scenic preservation award that we received in uh, 2016 for just beautification. Which the land that we have up here, we have mostly two types of grass. It'll be bahia grass or some common Bermuda. The only grass in the wintertime is rye is what we plant. We'll plant more rye grass than what we actually need and we'll graze it and then we'll take a certain percentage of it and shut it off in February and then we make solid hay out of it. If you got land that's not producing any grass, it's costing you. The more cattle you can put on the land, the more income you have at the end of the year. If there's no grass there, then half of the year, you're not even utilizing that place. So it's very important to have the grass. The more native grass is sitting on the land, it also prevents erosion which erosion is a huge problem in these hills. So if we can establish solid stand of grass in all places, we also eliminate a lot of erosion from running off in the pond, sediment running out of it. On rotational grazing, we found over the years that the, the, the smaller we can break these pastures down, the more benefits you get out of grazing. It also helps in pinning the cattle and setting the cattle up when it's time to pin them, when we ship them or when we pregnancy test them. We host field days and events, we have tours, and we just try to promote the beef industry in general and educate our customers in any way we can. You try to teach them EPDs, you try to teach them the way to raise cattle. We have a lot of resources that we've met across the United States in the registered business and we incorporate those into an educational program for our customers. I just think it's awesome that when we first started we had a handful of cattle and as Michael came into it and then Jared came into it to see what they've taken it to the many, many more next levels and to just see going from a handful of cattle to what we have today. But to be in the cattle business, it has to be in your heart. If it's not in your heart, then you don't need to be in the cattle business. It seeps from their pores, I guess you could say, that their drive to do is to get up in the morning, to be here and be here all day and even come home late in the evenings. I mean, it's literally a daylight to dark job that is their passion that's what they want to do they can't see themselves doing anything else they got to like it and both of them do the pride of ever ride through the cattle and know that 
we have made it to this point. Genetic wise, the way the herd looks to where we at, I think that's the biggest change to get to where we at today. Hoping that the next generation will take an interest in it. Could happen, not, I don't know. Can't force anybody to do anything. Well, I went through a phase in my life. After so many years of being in the construction business and owning other businesses, at the end of the day, when you got away from all the headaches, you came back to the farm and you ride around and watch the cattle and look at the cattle and watch the cattle graze. It's more enjoyment. It's, it's with everybody's cooperation. Michael, Jared, Craig, my daughter-in-laws, myself, the grandchildren. It makes all the difference in the world to be working with your family. It was a lot of money, it was a lot of mistakes costly mistakes, a lot of them, but the only way you're going to learn is just to do it.